check this out. What's that? Do you remember Joseph and ATM Montgolfier? The Montgolfier brothers? They were like the fathers of lighter than air. They invented the hot air balloon. That's right. Do you remember how they came about their discovery? Yeah. One of the dudes was sitting in front of the fireplace at one of his friend's houses. Right. That was Joseph. <laughs> and he was watching ashes rise up from the fire and up into the chimney. Then he got an idea to fold up a piece of paper and use it to capture the smoke somehow. When he let his paper go, just floated up into the chimney. Excellent. He was so excited about his discovery that he called up his brother. Abby, we're talking about 1783. Something tells me that they didn't have telephones back then. In fact, they weren't invented for another hundred years. Yeah, yeah, so he wrote his brother a letter, and from there they start to do experiments on balloons. Yeah, that's about right. They call them aerostats, though, and they had these big openings at the bottom that they used to catch the hot air, and they'd hold them over a bonfire and then release them when they were ready to fly. Right, okay. But the thing is, they thought it was the smoke that made their aerostats fly. So they'd burn straw and wood to fuel their fires, and they thought when they burned these things that it created some sort of weird gas that was lighter than air. Uh-huh. But in reality, it was only the heated air that made them fly. Okay, so I don't understand. I mean, what makes hot air lighter than colder air? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Oh, but does that have anything to do with blimps? I mean, we already know that blimps are filled up with helium to allow them to fly. But you're talking about hot air balloons. Maybe you're off track. Yeah, but I think there's something we need to explore here. Maybe it's important to include in our documentary. I don't know. Maybe we could ask Mr. Asik. He'll know what's up. Yeah, I'll take care of calling him. Do you have the number handy? Hey! Oh! Buoyancy. Huh? Buoyancy. That's the answer. Sounds familiar, but what does it mean? Mr. Essex said he'd explain it to us in his interview today. He said that buoyancy is one of the most important things that we'll learn when we do this video. He said that once we understand buoyancy, we'll understand how blimps and balloons are able to fly. So there is a connection between the blimp and the Mount Gaultier brothers? Mm-hmm. I love it when I'm right. Yeah, yeah. So where are we meeting him? In the science room? Actually, he gave me his home address. He said that he's going to take us on a boat ride today. A boat ride? I don't know. He said he'd explain it to us once we got there. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's hit it. We're continuing our quest to find out how the month was made and how it works. So why are we here at Punderson State Park? We're here to find out a little bit about buoyancy. Today we'll be taking a boat ride with Mr. Essig, our science teacher, and he promises to tell us a little bit about the concept of buoyancy and how it relates to the blimp. So Mr. Hassig, what is buoyancy? Well, buoyancy is a force that applies to all objects that are surrounded by a fluid, whether that fluid is water or air. Uh, this force of nature was first described by a man named Archimedes in 212 BC. Uh, buoyancy is actually a force that applies to an object because of the water or the air that that object is displaced. So, for example, when you sit down in a bathtub, you notice that the level of water in the bathtub is going to rise. Well, that level of rise is the displacement that you've created by sitting down. Now, that displacement has a mass, and the buoyancy of that thing is created as that mass of water pushes up against your body. Now, we don't really notice that too much in a bathtub because our bodies have this thing called density. Uh, the density of our body is a lot greater than that of the water, so we don't usually float in a bathtub. But if you were to go out to a place like Salt Lake, you could sit down and you would float because there the water has a density that's a lot greater than our body because of the dissolved salts. So what we have is as long as the mass of the object in the water or in air is less than the displaced mass, of water or air, it'll float. How does Archimedes' principle apply to this boat? Well, when we sit down in this boat, we notice that the boat sinks into the water. And when it does that, it's creating more displacement. Now, the boat by itself already has some displacement. As long as the mass of that displaced water is greater than the mass of this boat, plus you and I, the riders of the boat, then the boat's going to float. As soon as we get too many people in this boat, however, 
the mass of the boat is going to exceed the mass of the water we're displacing, and then you know what happens. <laughs> we sink. How does that apply to hot air balloons? With a hot air balloon, we achieve a difference in density by uh, heating the air inside the balloon. Well, that creates a difference between the mass of the air outside the balloon and the mass that the balloon itself is displacing, so the balloon wants to lift. Would outside temperature affect the buoyancy of the balloon? Absolutely it does. As the outside air temperature goes down, the air is going to get cooler, the molecules in the atmosphere are going to get more tightly packed, and that causes an increase in density. So actually, if you're interested in getting the maximum lift out of a hot air balloon, you would want to go up on a cool morning. In fact, most hot air balloon flights take place either in the evening or in the morning when air temperatures tend to be lower. How does that apply to the blimp? Well, the blimp takes advantage of buoyancy in a slightly different way. The blimp is filled with helium, which has a density that's about 15 times less than that of the atmosphere around it. So when you fill the blimp with helium, it achieves its buoyancy because of that difference. Now, because the blimp is made out of a lot of lightweight materials, there's a lot of leftover buoyancy. So that reserve buoyancy can be used to lift the payload. Usually it's passengers, but sometimes could be supplies. The pilots of the blimp have to worry about the weather because if it's raining a little bit, that rain is going to add weight to the blimp. A slight drizzle can add maybe 500 pounds to the blimp. Well, they'll still fly the blimp, but they can't take any passengers with them. If it's raining really hard, there can be as much as 800 pounds on the blimp. And in that case, there's probably just enough leftover buoyancy for the pilot alone. Are there limits to how large a blimp can be? Well, uh, technically there isn't. However, you do have to account for the construction of the blimp and the materials that you're using in the blimp, as well as the payload. So. Uh, you, you sort of have to take care not to lift too big an object because, of course, if it's too heavy, then it doesn't want to float. Buoyancy is why the blimp is able to fly. Any object will float as long as it has less mass than the liquid it displaces. That's known as Archimedes' principle. We also found out that temperature and air pressure affect how buoyant the blimp will be on any given day. As we've learned, buoyancy is what makes boats float and keeps them from sinking. And it's what allows the blimp to be lighter than air. Changing the buoyancy of a balloon is how you steer it. Balloon pilots take advantage of winds blowing in different directions at various altitudes. They go up or down to catch a wind that will make the craft float in the general direction they want to go. A hot air balloon pilot heats up the air in the balloon to go up or releases hot air to go down. A helium or hydrogen filled balloon gains altitude as the sun heats and expands the lifting gas and then loses altitude when the gas cools and compresses. The pilot can counteract these changes by dropping ballast to make the balloon lighter or letting some lifting gas escape to make it heavier. Each flight is a delicate juggling act to catch favorable winds. <laughs>